In 1963, at the height of the civil rights movement, Stan Lee, the founder of Marvel Comics, created a series centered around a team of mutant superheroes that fought against prejudice. Entitled the X-Men, these characters were outsiders and misfits with supernatural powers who protect a world that loathed them for being different. Now, after some 37 years, director Brian Singer is about to release the highly anticipated film version, and here's the trailer from the film. X-Men opens this Friday. I'm pleased to welcome back to this table the director, Brian Singer. Welcome back. You, <laughs> as young as you are, a $75 million film, um, had never read, did not even know what the X-Men were, correct? That's true. Yeah. <laughs> What, did, did these boys at Fox make the right choice? Oh, I hope so. <laughs> no. uh, or ladies, if it might have been. Uh, tell me about it. I mean, what, what's it like to make this film? A, because of the comics. Mm. B, because you got tons of fans and three or four, at least three or four websites. Mm -hmm. You got everybody saying, all right, show me. <laughs> Well, um, it, it was a process. Uh, I, I was looking for something to do, uh, and uh, a partner of mine, Tom DeSanto, uh, producing partner, ha had been a fan since he was a little boy of X-Men and kept wanting me to meet with the people at Marvel and explore what it was. Fox had brought me the project when it was in a script, uh, an earlier version of a script that I, I hadn't even, I never even to this day haven't even read. Um, and uh, I just wasn't really interested because I, I didn't I just didn't read comics when I was growing up. I watched a lot of television, watched a lot of movies, read science fiction. But but uh, he set up a meeting uh, for myself and the people at Marvel. And Stan Lee was a, uh, among those I met with, and the producer Lauren Schuler Donner and people at 20th Century Fox. And um, and I uh, and I, uh, I prior to the meeting I did a lot of research into the comic. I read the character biographies. I read some of the books. And then I sat down with these people, and uh, it was I, I started on the spot in the kind of way that I work, you know, coming up with ideas and stories and uh, plot lines and character relationships inspired by the character biographies mostly, because they're such rich, depthful characters. So, uh, but mostly I hit it off with Stan, and it really inspired me to go forward. And I, I watched all 70 episodes of the animated series, read more of the books, and became a real big fan. This is about three. A little over three years ago. So since then, I've become a huge fan. But uh, but but uh, it, it was a process. What's the appeal? Well, um, I think beneath the, uh, the, the the costumes and the spectacle and the, and, the, and the fighting and the fun, there's an underlying philosophy uh, about prejudice, about uh, feeling outcast, uh, fear of the unknown, trying to find your place in the world. Very universal. Concepts that uh, that people have uh, have been attracted to, mostly young people. You know, when you're an adolescent, you you always feel different. Where the hell are we? And uh, I think uh, any young person exposed to X-Men says, wow, if I, what if I was, could, could go to Professor Charles Xavier's School for the Gifted in Westchester, New York, where right. I could hone my fantastic powers and, and, and help Played defend them. Patrick Stewart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, it's a very universal concept, I think. Yeah. It is, I mean, amazing, I assume, that it is because it is this identification of people feeling alone and feeling mm -hmm. different and feeling like... Like know, a mutant. Like a mutant, yeah. I mean, that's, that's universal identification with... Yeah, with different, it doesn't matter, and, and anyone, even as you grow, get older, you feel, you know, am I, am I in, this, in this alone? Am I the only person that feels this feel way? this way, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Did you have any of that as a kid? Oh, plenty of that, yeah. yeah. I, I had the, uh, the, 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 the misfortune of being both a nerd and a bad student, so I, I didn't really have a tremendous amount going for me, and I don't think I was all that attractive, so it was, it was there, and, and, or athletic, or and anything. Uh, so I, I kind of lost myself in that world of uh, science fiction. Of and, your imagination. And imagination, yeah. yeah. So and movies was a natural place for you to gravitate to? Very natural. I'd been doing it, photography and movies since I was like 13, in, in the 8 millimeter format. Yeah. Uh, 
so you get this commitment of $75 million to go make a movie, mm -hmm. right? And you've got the creator of the X-Men on your side. He's supportive and believes in it and enthusiastic about it. So everybody's on board. How difficult is it to make a movie like this? Well, um, it, it, difficult for, for tons of, special tons effects. of reasons, um, yeah. uh, one of which special effects. But that came, came fairly easily, easily to me. There are tools like cinematography, lighting, sound. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, 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 you know, and if you have an imagination, you can sort of visualize yeah. these things. Uh, the, the, the issue was a, a little tough mostly because the budget of the film, comparatively to most big event kind of films, was fairly conservative, right. and the, the time, the schedule when we were to be released, and these things were were, were real real challenges for us, uh, and also worried worrying about the fans to some degree and the non fans and how they would respond or take an interest in the movie. But again, you know, my approach to that was always um, how would I want a director to treat my favorite universe, something I've loved for decades, and I I would simply want he or she to take it. Seriously, as seriously as you take any serious science fiction film, with all the action and the fun, it should be taken seriously. It should be looked at as a film. So uh, I did. I looked at it as I'd look at uh, any other film I'd make, and and that's how I hope to deliver. All right, let's just take a small slice here. Let's take this one clip, and and then we'll talk more about it. This is where Xavier introduces Logan to the X Men. Roll tape. You're in my school for the gifted, for mutants. You'll be safe here from Magneto. What's a Magneto? A very powerful mutant who believes that a war is brewing between mutants and the rest of humanity. <laughs> so what are we seeing there? You're seeing uh, uh, the main character, Wolverine, yeah. be introduced to the world of the X-Men, yeah. <laughs> or a small part of that world. Uh, Patrick Stewart's an obvious casting, isn't it, for that kind of role? I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> That's an easy call. Mm -hmm. yeah. Was this a hard or easy film to cast? A difficult film to cast because um, I had experience casting an ensemble picture uh, right. in, with the usual suspects. But in this case, you're not only bound to a lot of actors and their schedules over a long period of shooting time, but also certain physical properties. You really, you know, the the, the comic book kind of demands that you can't cast a 50 year old African American to play Jean Grey or Cyclops or something like that. You 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 have to be reasonably faithful to to the, the X-Men universe, so that imposes even more restrictions. So yeah, it, it's, a, it's a challenge to cast a movie like this. I want to take a look at another clip because then we can talk more about this. This is where uh, Storm and Cyclops fight uh, Sabretooth uh, and Toad at the train station, just to give you one more slice at this movie because it's so anticipated because of the popularity of the X-Men. Here it is. <gasps> Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Is it true that you can recite every line of dialogue in this film? Oh, yeah, probably, yeah. yeah. Mo and most of the films I've made. Yeah. You just memorize the script? Uh, well, or I'm very just... involved in the developing of the scripts, and some of, uh, and I've written part of the scripts. So, so uh, uh, yeah, part of knowing what I'm, uh, part of knowing what I'm, looking for in terms of performance is hearing it in my head and part of hearing it in, in my head is reciting it to myself and pretending I'm the actor. Where do you get the ability to work with actors? I mean, well, I, I, what I try to do is first create an environment where they can feel and, and trust that nobody knows the movie and cares more about the movie than me. So then trust exists and once trust exists um, uh, then they can. Then the best that they have to offer can can emerge. I guess that's that's the the base idea. Patrick Stewart, Ian McKellum, Hugh Jackman, Ellie Berry, Anna Paquin, James Marsden. Um, Ian McKellen said the following. He said that he drew a parallel to the misfit mutants in the film to what he feels like to be gay in real life. Well, yeah, perhaps even more so than 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 some some minorities or or, or discriminated groups. Uh, he, you know, he, with, with gay kids, you've got young kids who uh, who discover their sexuality or something, and, and and not even their own parents identify or understand it. So, yeah, perhaps you know that 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 makes some sense as well. But I think it's really a, a, a 
you know, applies to any, 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 anybody who feels at any time different or strange, any group. That's why there's a huge, you know, X-Men's always had a huge African-American following and, uh, and also... Just for that reason, because uh, well, an identification of what it means to, to, to be, be treated a, different. To, absolutely, and, and also it's one of the few comic universes that's crossed um, not just the generations, because it's from 1963, and has become you know, the most popular comic book in the world, but also because uh, uh, also it's crossed the genders, which is, which is unique, because there's such strong women characters in, in, in the comic. And there's so many characters, too. Unfortunately, we can only address a certain amount in the mm. picture, but it's just a first movie. But in the end, was the experience of making this any different from any other film you've ever made, Out Pupil or uh, Usual Suspects? I mean, in a sense, is it what you do remains the same, regardless of the budget, regardless of special effects, regardless of whether it's a small focus film or a larger film driven from a popular other source. Yeah, I, I, absolutely the same. I mean, it's, it's longer shoot, longer days. It becomes an endurance test sometimes, but, but ultimately it's, it's very similar. You know, whether it's an original idea or a novella, you know, like Suspects or a novella like A Pupil, the comic, comic book, it's, it's, it's still a film that's going to stand on its own. And uh, you st still approach performances no matter how outrageous the costumes get or the yeah. powers, you still have to sit there and ex explain to Ian McKellen while he's hanging from cables and with his ha helmet and cape, okay, I need it real, I need it, I need it, I need conversational, I need you to be real, and he just looks at you and says, right, okay, we'll do it again. <laughs> <laughs> but are, do you, are you telling him that it wasn't real and it wasn't conversational and, and I need more of this? Some, sometimes uh, more of this, more of that. Yeah, oh, there's always the, you know, that kind of discourse. Some, sometimes you're, you're, you're in a position and you, you're, you're, you're having trouble visualizing the moment or what's going to happen before or after uh, if you're an actor. And you, you think you have the idea uh, firm, but, then, but, but, but it, you're not getting it. And that's where I come in because I know what came before and what will come after. And I can sort of give that kind of, uh, that kind of advice. Uh, you know. But uh, these are fine actors. I mean, these guys, you yeah. know, I've got, you know, I have as much to learn from them as... Uh, if, not, if not a lot more than they do from a and little guy you, like me. And do you? Learn from them? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I learn from everybody. Yeah, sure. Every, you know, every day shooting, you learn something. You know, a week of shooting is like five years of film school. It's crazy. Do you, do you view this as some kind of turning point for you in a sense that some muscles you had to challenge, you know, you had to, to use some experiences that were important wherever you wanted to go in, as a filmmaker? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, honestly, I, I've always loved science fiction and fantasy as a genre, both uh, in literature and in film and television. So I've desperately wanted to get into it, and this is a way into it. What's next? I don't know. I, people, I, I just finished this movie uh, literally a week and a half ago. I've never even seen it with an audience. Um, so I, I, I need to rest for at least a few weeks <laughs> before I figure that out. What did you think when this was supposed to be a Christmas release and they said, no, 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 we've changed our mind? Well, when they it's called... It's a summer movie. Yeah. Well, when they called me and said, you've got the summer, I said, oh, great, summer 2001. Well, that'll great. be an extra six months. Think of all the things I'll be able to accomplish with an extra six months. And then, then the president of the studio said, no, it's summer 2000. And I said, oh, well, I guess we have no choice. I thought... Just ch that I, 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 that was the first of a hundred obstacles I knew I would have to uh, encounter before before I was finished. I just knew it. I said, "This is the first one, and there's going to be more." Okay, but but you had no doubt that you could do it. Um, um, barring yeah, no catastrophe. Yeah, barring catastrophe. And there was one point where we lost a lead actor and 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 and, and, and had to recast. And I thought, "Oh, well, this is great. We've got to shut down." We got to reconnoiter, and, and, and then, but, but I found a guy I loved, and mm. I started right back up again. No, no, we, it was, it was an inter interesting um, game of chicken with the release date. And who was the actor you lost? Uh, an actor named Dugray Scott, a really wonderful actor who had a scheduling conflict, so um, I, I cast Hugh Jackman as uh, Wolverine, who was a relatively unknown, which was kind of nice. X-Men opens in theaters nationwide this Friday, July 14th. Brian Singer, thank you. Great thank to see you. you again. Good Bye. to see you again. Thank you for joining us. See you next time.